Hey guys, and welcome back to the Blaze TV podcast. Um, Ed Kimberly hosting, as always. And uh, on today's episode, something a, a little bit different. So um, one of the Blaze sponsors um, dropped me a message um, a couple of days ago and said, hey, look, we, we really want to um, jump on the podcast, talk a little about mental health with uh, World Mental Health Day just around the corner. And I was 100% up for that. So I thought, let's get this together. Um, a couple of the guys from the team wanted to jump on as well to talk about their experiences with mental health. So something a little bit different, but I'm really looking forward to this episode and I hope um, you guys are too. So by way of introductions, because there's more than just one guest on this episode, as you probably just figured out. So we've got Beth from Energize, um, the Blaze sponsor, uh, and we've got Kim Talberg and Will Bray as well from the Blaze playing roster. So guys, hi, how's it all going? Good, thank you. Yeah, pretty Kim, good, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Kim's not handed it, so we caught up in the summer, but for Will and Beth, this is a this is a bit of a new thing. So um I guess I'll take it easy on you both. And, and Kim, you and I can be the <laughs> we can be the seasoned vets in this conversation. I guess. Yeah. Kim, you can go hard. <laughs> yeah. Almost, uh, yeah. It's a little bit of a different setting from when I last spoke to Kim, which was in Sweden, uh in, in on your parents' porch. If I remember right, the sun was just going down, it was beautiful, and everybody's got white walls yeah. behind them. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, different. Yeah. different but it's great to have you all out over over in in the uk so um, i'll tell you what, i'll throw over to beth first if that's okay beth because um you, you dropped me a message you really were keen to do this i i, I grabbed that opportunity because i'm really um mental health is very important to everybody i think and it's great you know certainly through my upbringing and, and especially now i'm a little bit older um it's great that people are talking about it more so just tell us a little bit first of all if you can um introduce energize to everybody what what do you guys do what are you all about so, um, thank you firstly for letting us do this podcast. Um, in terms of what Energize is, in a nutshell, because it's a such, you know, with mental health, it's obviously, you know, such a wide area to focus on. We basically specialise in exercise led interventions to improve mental health and overall wellbeing. So, we focus on bringing exercise, self reflection, and communication together. And it's about reconnecting the body and mind, probably what a lot of people don't know when you suffer with mental health issues or early signs of anxiety that you get that disconnect and it's about bringing that kept connect the body and mind back together using you know simple strategies to be able to kind of design a unique plan around coping mechanisms that you know for yourself that might arise now or in the future to be able to deal with your own issues and i saw that you you do a lot of work in prisons as well and that's a a really high stress environment i guess so the, the the mental health aspect of that is very important yeah um yeah and is probably its niche is prisons to be honest um when we first launched prisons were kind of not the area that we were focusing on but I, we got targeted by um a particular prison and it kind of just went from there but yeah we work with you know men and women who are probably at their most vulnerable mm -hmm. um people that have lost their purpose, lost their sense of direction in life, you know, are suffering with a, an array of mental health issues, you know, not just anxiety and depression, but could be, you know, substance misuse, et cetera, or it could be, you know, um, their kind of life background in terms of what they've been through, but now they find themselves in an environment like that. So yeah, we do some very kind of challenging work, but the outcomes are amazing. And it's been able to kind of give everyone that opportunity. And that's what, energizes about it's, it's not about you know kind of folk targeting one particular area i think everyone should have a chance to be able to improve their own yeah for sure and um what would you to working and teaming up with the blaze bear so to be honest um i've wanted to kind of do some work with the blaze for quite a while um but me being me i have to make sure that i can fully put 100 percent into it um, so I contacted Danny this year, wanted to be a sponsor, but also put the opportunity out there, you know, that I'm willing to um, support the players with their mental well-being. You know, I think the physicality of like ice hockey and the mentality go hand in hand, you mm -hmm. know, without both of them working together. It's a lot on the players and especially, you know, um, the players being elite professional players that you've got that pressure the whole time, you know, on games on training, on performance, on confidence, etc. So I just thought it'd be something different to be able to offer the, the um, Blaze team 
and um, whoever else needs that support. So it's been great that, you know, we've, we've already had an uptake and, and it's great that the guys are interested in it too and really see the opportunity there. Yeah. And it kind of makes sense, right? If you think about it, because I mean, like I kind of said in the introduction, when I was a kid, we didn't really talk about our mental health at all. And, you know, I realized how, uh, how far we've come since then, but it makes sense, right? So if, if a guy pulls a hamstring, Nikki Sherlock's there to help it out. Whereas if, if one of the guys is struggling with the mental side of things, of course you need someone there to help, right? That makes total Definitely. sense. Definitely. And I think, I think to try and get across, it's okay to feel a certain way, you know, particularly yeah. with men, you know, us women, um, we, we're emotional, we're, we'll show our, but, you know, and display our kind of behaviours and emotions from the get go. Whereas, you know, men with like the stigma and particularly, the, you know, the culture of kind of sports players as, as well. You don't mm. necessarily want to speak about that, but I think it's getting the guys to understand it's okay. It's okay if you need help. That should and it that shouldn't then impact what people view of you. I think it's a very very powerful um, thing that you know men can kind of display how they're feeling and that actually they may need support because we all do through life. So it's great to try and be able to push push that with the blaze particularly. And obviously, you know, the blaze has always been kind of in my life, I obviously played ice hockey and went to watch the Blaze myself. So it's nice to be able to support now a sport that I'm really passionate about, but also doing the passion I love as well. No, I, I, I totally identify with that, you know, being a Blaze fan growing up and now being able to do Blaze TV, for example. Yeah. It's, um, it, it's very fulfilling, very rewarding. Um, Will, I'm going to come over to you if you don't mind, because um, Energize are, are your personal sponsor for this year. Um, and I guess having the relationship that you do with Energize and, and what they're all about is is very important to you because I understand you know you've been on a, a, a journey with your mental health that's it's had a big part of your development. Um, are you okay just to talk about that a little bit? Tell us about um, your experiences. Yeah, so just sort of in general, like my sort of experience, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, as a kid, you know. Um, maybe I was 11, 12, maybe. And, you know, school wasn't exact. It all stemmed from, like, school, I guess, when I was a kid anyway. Um, and when I was a kid, sort of, you notice these things. And even then, when I was a young boy, that sort of wasn't a thing. Mm -hmm. But then as time went on a little bit and, you know, people around you start to recognise, you know, you're not looking yourself, you're not being yourself or something like that. You sort of recognize it and you sort of go like, okay, maybe I'm not. And then you've got good people around you and you can say like, okay, I'm not, maybe I do need help. Um, so through the ages of really from then on up to 16, you're constantly like trying to, work on it and sort work on it I guess yeah and sort of try and help yourself because it's not very easy at all it's incredibly hard so you sort of get help and you start to talk about it and it really helps obviously like it can fluctuate and that's only natural it's something that will never go away but the more you talk about it you feel better for it and then getting older now, you know it's okay to, you know, speak about it and things like that. It's not something that you have to keep to yourself. And like Beth touched on, like a stigma almost, there is still, there's always people, always going to be people who think, oh, I look weak if I speak out. But in reality, it's very much a stronger thing to sort of, admit it and be honest with it and you feel a lot better for it as well I think and I certainly do if I ever have you know a hard day or something if you speak about it it's a lot better yeah no for sure and I think what's really important within what you said Will is it's very much an ongoing process right I guess you kind of have to accept that you are going to have your peaks and your troughs you're going to feel great some days you're going to want to go to the rink and smash it there are going to be other days where man just throwing those legs over the other side of the bed and putting the slippers on is, is real is real tough yeah there is 
absolutely there's some days where you feel really light bouncy you know everything you just feel great as a person you know and I think everyone has those days and there's some days where you know you just feel like it's a really tough day and you just feel like you're having to battle through it but I think it's important to remember that it's part of a process it's always the same and for everybody else it's the same you know not every day is going to be a perfect day but if you can recognize that and like the saying is a day of rain doesn't mean it's winter like you can I, f- I don't know if that's a quote I might be wrong but, I like it. I'm feeling it <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah but you know what I mean if you you can just sort of recognize that and have it with perspective yeah and just that's know cool. that it is always ongoing you can never you know have it fixed you know it's always something that you you have a relationship with and you always have to like your body look after it, look after it yeah that's that's a really good way and i think someone said something similar to me and, and it's kind of where i was thinking about in terms of you pull a hamstring nicky's there um so to have someone around that can talk to you when your mental health is huge um kim let's go to you you've been quietly sat in the corner um yeah, talk about yeah, how... <laughs> you're still here we're glad you're still here, Kim. Um, yeah. Tell us about the the importance of the mental side to, to your game and, and how you prepare as a pro. I recognized pretty early in my career that I was very interested in the mental stuff. It's same as I develop my physique and get stronger and better. The same works with the brain and I try to find as much as tools I can to develop that to get other perspective on things and uh, that's going to help me to enjoy what I do more so for me it's uh it's the the mu- the muscle I practice most and I value the most too so uh, and I'm very interested in it too so I I really like it and to have uh, energized to as a sponsor and the team can use that that's perfect like that's not many team have that so I, I think that's a, a great thing. Like you don't you don't need a problem or something to, to get the help. It's more like a investment in yourself to find to find other ways or uh, how you can think and how you react to different situations and just get better as a person. So I I just think it's a positive thing to try to develop. No, I, I completely agree. And being the first year you've played outside of Sweden to be in a club like the Blaze that take mental health really seriously, um, that must be really encouraging for you. Because I imagine coming over, you know, there must be an anxiety, um, some nervousness, but to have a great support system that you do with the Blaze must have been really relieving. Yeah, it's, I would say the hockey family around the world is pretty easy to come into. So I, I come here totally new. I didn't know anyone, but it took a couple of hours and I I was in it. So the people who is around the club and in the in the team, that's that's really important. And it's uh, it's very easy, I think, in the hockey room for the most places to feel comfortable and uh, and get a good place. So so far it's just really really good and i enjoy it and particularly when you've got teammates like will who, who are very open to you know talking about their own mental health but also talk about yours if, if you want to that's that's huge isn't it particularly you know will being a british kid um one of the local guys that's that's huge yeah that's really good will is a good good man and he he's young and uh taking this uh so early it's a really good for his journey so that's just gonna develop him more. So I'm glad that he 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 take that that way. So that's good. Beth, I'm gonna come back to you if you don't mind. So I mean, I, I've known Danny a little while now. Um, since you know he's been coach of the Blaze, I I met him a few times when when I was a fan and he was playing when I was a kid. Um, he's always striving to to improve and get better. Um, as a coach, and I imagine one of the things that you know he will be developing is not just coaching the guys as hockey players but it'll be kind of coaching their, their mental health as well right that, that's really important yeah definitely and to be honest um Danny's been 
a big supporter and you know making ensuring that the guys well-being this year you know probably more than most years you know because obviously energize is something different mm-hmm. um to be able to try and promote and he, he's been fully on board you know even asking questions you know what what sort of things can I do with the lads you know to kind of make sure that I'm I'm as a coach you know wary of their mental well-being you know so mm. he's taking it on and like big and I think he's you know as he's as he said to me the mental side is matches the physical side you know we, we kind of forget that and what he's learned over the years being a coach is that actually they work hand in hand so it's great that this year you know he really wants to push it and he's really behind what we're trying to do um so yeah I think it's equally important I think you know for players to be able to go to their coach and be like I don't feel good today or I've lacked confidence something's happened at home you know to be able to have that kind of rapport with a coach I think is massive because you know it's not just about the players it's about being a team and you know everyone else as Kim said you know the whole kind of network around you working together as one you know and that makes people then feel supported so that actually their mental health then feels better as well you know with a strong foundation you can then build from that yeah that's interesting actually kim if you don't mind i'm just going to ask you real quick um they often say about goal scorers that you know it can be a confidence thing you know when you've gone a few games without scoring one and i've just put that something beth just said really sat with me um as a forward, as a guy that's been brought over here to score goals, having that work for you, you know, the mental side to putting the puck in the net, that's that's really important too, right? That's not to be taken for granted. Of course, that's important. And that's why I mean to be interesting in this stuff, to, to not get that thinking like a negative thing. Or it's, it's a blessed to come here and to score goals. That's the best, best thing you can do. And if you try your best every day to do it more not so much more you can do and just don't stress about it don't so that's what i mean like stuff like this uh now when i've been in the game for a while i find it's really important and that's makes if you stress about stuff like that then you don't enjoy the game anymore so that's why i mean it's really important to develop your brain and the, to to enjoy what you do, if I can stay like that, yeah. Yeah, for sure. And Will, I mean, obviously Kim will think that uh, scoring a goal is the best feeling in the world for a goalie. I'm, I'm assuming stopping a guy on a breakaway with only a couple of seconds left in the game feels pretty great too. Um, but goalies have such a hard job, right? I mean, what's that cliche? The goalies have the only job in the world where if you make a mistake, a big red light goes on above your head and, and everybody knows about it. So. Um, I guess, tell us a little bit about how that affects you as a, as a goalie, you know, when you make a mistake, when you see a couple go behind you, because that's, that's quite hard, right? Yeah, obviously, <clears throat> it's, uh, it's pretty tough. Um, it's ne- it, you don't uh, forget about it. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a little different, but I think playing the position is the best, to me, the best thing you could do in the world. So, if I can, you know, or any goalie, you know, maintain that mindset and enjoy what you do, um, it makes dealing with, you know, the odd goal going in a bit easier and you know you'll get the next one. Um, but, yeah, it is definitely a little hard if you make a mistake. I guess if Kimmy misses the net, they just go around and collect the puck on the D. But um, for me, obviously, if I make a mistake, you know about it, but, Hopefully, I don't make too many. No, hopefully. Um, yeah. The other thing as well is that, you know, you're the number two goalie, you're the backup goalie, which in itself is really difficult because you're constantly on edge to be called into action. But at the same time, I guess there's there's really long periods of lull. So, I mean, how does that affect you? What are your, what are your thoughts on that? It is, it's unique, I guess you could say it is, but... You know, the way I sort of try to stay on top of it is going through my routines. Like, even when I'm not playing, I'll go for a routine as if I was playing. Um, And I think you just have to enjoy it, smile and enjoy it. I don't think you can worry too much about it. Like Kim said, you can't worry about these sorts of things. You know, if you you play, go out there, 
it's an opportunity and have fun, you know. Um, playing is a great blessing, so go and enjoy it, you know. Um, but yeah, hundred percent is different, but it is a great difference. So, I think Beth, um, back to you if you don't mind. So, I guess one of the cliches that I've heard, which around hockey, and talking to, I mean, more coaches that I've spoke to in the elite than I care to count. Um, they all say a similar thing that it's important for the guys not to get too high with the highs and too low with the lows. What are your thoughts on that? Because that's an interesting statement, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And the fact is, as, as Will, you know, referenced, it's hard not to let mistakes get to you. But I think it's having the understanding, and this is what we try to do in Energize, is that, you know, everything, you know, mistakes do happen. You know, I always relate it to, you know, you can, you can in ice hockey, you know, when you're taking the puck round, round cones, that's kind of like your mental health, you know. It goes up and down and around. It doesn't go straight forward. That, that's not what mental health does. There's not a straight line, you know. So it's, it's more about how do you cope better with dealing with, yes, I made a mistake, but what, what can I do next, you know, to make, one, that mistake not happen or maybe feel like, feel like I could do something different. And, you know, it, there's, there's so many different ways in terms of how you can react to things. And I think it's more about having that understanding that actually, you know, but how your brain works is that actually, you know, your reactions are always going to come like fast and powerful, you know, yeah. before, before any logic comes behind it. And it's about, you know, giving men and women the understanding that actually, you know, you can get back to that point of feeling, you know, it's okay. Mm. And okay, this is what I need to do. Or yes, I felt like that for, 10 minutes that's fine you know not making it then affect like your whole week as you say you, ha you can have good and bad days I think you know I think it's normalizing that you know we have emotions and that's fine to feel those emotions they shouldn't be hidden you know we don't need to be wearing a mask the whole time to be able to demonstrate who we are and that's what mm. a lot of people you know try to do so I think it's more about understanding what's the best way that's going to work for you in terms of how you feel, you know, in terms of, yes, I made a mistake or I've had a really good game, etc. How does that impact you? And looking back at it and thinking, actually, okay, if I do this, then I feel a lot better about it. Because as yeah. you say, it, it's a game and all you can do on the day is put the best thing you can, you know? And as, and as Will said, you know, you, you have good and bad days. Yeah. So we have to be realistic with those. Yeah, I, I certainly feel like that from, from the position that I'm in, you know, um, commentating on the games. And one thing that I, I guess identified for me recently is that, you know, when you're commentating on a hockey game, your brain's going a million miles an hour, right? Because you're obviously trying to um, translate what's going on on the ice to, to at home. You're trying to make it entertaining. You know, for, for me, I guess, and, and the Blaze uh, the Blaze webcast, we have a brand. You know, our brand is that we try and call the game pretty evenly, um, being that, you know, a lot of our um, viewers are, are, are away fans, right? So if we're really Blaze, you know, biased, it doesn't really, doesn't really you know, for me anyway, translate that well to, to an audience. Um, you've also got the stats to think about. I know it sounds really silly, but I mean, I've been doing this 10 years and there's still a part of my brain that's like, don't swear, you know, and, and I naturally swear quite a lot. So my brain goes a million miles an hour when I'm commentating. There's always things to talk about, you know, trying to figure out what to say, what not to. And then recently I realized, you know, when I get home, I have a real bad lull. Like I can feel really low. I guess while my brain tries to catch up with that, it's, 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 it's steady now. It doesn't have to go a million miles an hour. Um, and I guess that's, that's probably the same in lots of walks of life, right? Definitely. And, you know, and I think we've all got different kind of, things that we go through that we can relate to you know like you're commentating the boys are playing ice hockey you know obviously my job is to help and support people and that you know it that can be mentally draining in itself you know because mm. you hear things on a daily basis that you know are are upsetting or maybe a trigger for you you know so I think it's more about you know learning your own coping mechanisms rather than trying to fit into a mechanism you think is going to work it's yeah. about building that around yourself. I think I said to one of the lads on um, on an energized session, you know, energized doesn't, you know, 
you don't fit energize energize fits around you because we're all individual you know it's not a one fits all approach so it's how you know how you can embed the right strategies around yourself you know things you might be reading you might not relate with but if you break it down in your head to kind of think you know why do I feel that way or you know it's okay to have that kind of lull and get Mm. back up because you know you've had a lot of pressure on you for the last how many hours while she's trying to commentate a game you know and you've got to be wary of not to swear or to say the right yeah. thing etc <laughs> so I think it's more about knowing that you know feeling that way is okay but if you don't like the way you feel what 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 can we do sure. to kind of try and make you feel better in a way that's suited to you rather than to you know trying to suit it to someone else that it doesn't really relate to yeah no I understand Hey, Kim, do you do you find there's a similar thing for you in, in that, you know, once you finish playing, win or lose, you kind of get showered, get changed, you hit the bus. Do, do you find that you have something similar or, or how does how do the, how does after the game affect your mental health? No, I would say it's it's good. I, I don't think so much. Uh, <laughs> I always, of course, it's something there, but nothing that creates me negative or I just try to find solution if I think something is if I think on something that's good now we always have video you can go and watch situation if you want to watch something and learn about it or otherwise if it's a a tough game and we lose I try to leave it in the shower just rinse it off and bring something positive with me nowadays so I wouldn't say that affect me negative no more, no. That's good. That's really cool. Um, Will, what about you? Do you do you find after you've had a, you know, maybe a rough practice or even just after a game, do, do you find that there's a, a shift in your state of, of mind or? Uh, I mean, if there's a t- tough game or, or or tough practice, obviously there's some sort of, you feel a bit maybe angry or whatever. Because obviously I don't like laying goals, and I'll be honest, I can't stand it. But I think when you're able to frame it positively and take something out of it, you can feel okay about it, and you can feel better about it. Sort of, sort of thing. I think in every sort of mistake or failure, bad game, whatever, there's something to learn. And, you know, next time you play or whatever, you don't make the same mistake twice. And that's where, you know, your game keeps getting better. And that's where you see progress. Yeah, that, that's similar for me as well. You know, I, I, I watch highlights religiously, even though I hate the sound of my own voice. Uh, when the highlight packages come out, I'm probably one of the first people to watch it just to, you know, I always have that in the back of my mind. I think I messed that goal up. You know, I didn't really give a good call on that goal. I remember David Clements, actually. I remember... He scored his first pro goal and I commentated on it and I gave him an awful call. I messed it up. I can't remember what I did, but I remember feeling so bad because that was a big moment for him. I messaged him afterwards. And I never really do this and just said, hey, I'm really sorry. I, when you get the highlights back, I messed that up. And he was really cool about it. You know, he's a really young guy and he was just like, don't worry about it, man. It's, don't worry, it's cool. Um, but yeah, no, that's that's cool. Um, I, I'm glad that, you know, we, I guess, as a, a sporting society, you know, and just society in general, um, are talking about it more, Beth, and I think that's that's huge. And um, I guess if you had to give an, uh, just one kind of a bit of advice or, or a final message um, to listeners, um, what would that be? Oh wow! Okay. Um, yeah, on the this, spot. This is <laughs> this is a hard one because it sure, it's, yeah. so, it's so passion, like it's a huge passion. Um, you know, a lot of the players, I'm quite open about my own story. Um, I wouldn't be sat here doing energize if mental health hadn't affected me. Mm-hmm. um you know and then obviously I've gone on to kind of promote it and get the kind of research behind it in order to be able to do this but I think it's you know to, to kind of never forget your purpose you know never forget who you are truly you know don't try to be something you're not or feel like you have to be something for the environment or you know the people you hang around with to be in and never feel ashamed to show the true you you know never feel ashamed to, to know that you're going through issues or you know things are affecting you in a way and always ask for help you know help help shouldn't be you know dampened down help should be only lifted up 
in terms of, you know, there's so many people out there to be able to help people, whether it's your friend, whether it's, you know, like the guys using Energize, etc. you know, that one, that one thing of, you know, how are you doing today? You know, what, what, you, you know, what have you learned today? Or is there something I can help you with? Can mean so much to people that are going through things. So I think it's, you know, never forget yourself and always try to work on you. As Kim said, you know, the mental side is so important. You know, never forget that. Never leave it aside because if there's something you can work on, you know, and always kind of have a spin on the negative and kind of move it into a positive rather than, you know, letting it sift. And just know that, you know, there is people like myself and other people out there that, you know, aren't your kind of clinical professionals that you have to go and, you know, have a waiting list to speak to or, but put it into a different perspective, you know, mm-hmm. making people feel comfortable to be vulnerable. And that's really important to be able to, you know, so yeah, just, just be you and know that, you know, we all feel that way and no one should ever feel ashamed of that. That's a great note to finish on. I think if you don't mind guys, this has been a really cool conversation. Uh, I've really enjoyed this. Thank you, Beth, for reaching out and, uh, and, and not making me do this, but giving me the opportunity to do this. No, I think, I think it's great. And I think it, you know, for the blaze as a team and obviously the, the guys will and um, Kim to come on and, you know, do something like this. They should be so, so proud, you know, and in terms yeah. of, you know, being able to kind of support mental health as a team and support their players through it, I think is only, you know, a kind of clap on the back for people that want to do that in the blaze because, you know, some sports teams don't do anything. And it's nice that, that, you know, they've got the kind of opportunity. And I've always, you know, with Will's story, he, he shone out to me as a player to be able to sponsor because he related, you know, so fair play to him as well for all you know for kind of being open about it especially in a world that as you say you know has got quite a stigma and culture around it you know he he should be really proud of that yeah both of you guys kim and and will thank you so much for um for sharing some of some of your stories and and some of your insights around mental health because i guess not necessarily a stigma but i guess there's an impression of hockey players of being these big tough guys um they play a tough old sport you got you know, knives strapped to your feet, you're locked in a cage for 60 minutes, but you know, there's, there's a lot more going on um, than just what you show on the outside. So thank you both. Thank you, Beth. And, and thank you everybody for, for watching this. Um, there's so much uh, material online that you can, you can go to. Um, if you did want to learn about more mental health, if you search for World Mental Health Day, um, there'll be a lot of info on that as well. So um, f- from me, from everybody on Blaze TV, from Beth, Will and Kim, thank you so much for joining us and uh, we'll see you soon. Take care.